Hello, and welcome everyone to today's virtual briefing. My name is Becky Bowles, and I'm with the Connected Commerce Council, also known as 3C. Okay, I'd like to start things off today by introducing Rob Russliff. Rob is the Executive Director of the Connected Commerce Council. It's an advocacy group dedicated to promoting opportunities for digitally powered small businesses, including access to digital technologies and tools that are important to modern small businesses. In 2018, the Connected Commerce Council was founded to help support small businesses as a resource and an advocate in order to give entrepreneurs a seat at the table when it comes to important policies and legislation that could impact their business. And that's why we're so excited to host this briefing for you, where in just a few minutes, you'll get to hear from three rural small business owners about how they started their business and how they sell their products today. We'll also be presenting new findings from new research we've recently published that better understands how online marketplaces and web stores are disproportionately more important to rural sellers and how proposed legislation moving through Congress would impact these rural small businesses. Before we hear from our three rural seller panelists, I'd like to introduce John Potter from 3C. John is going to share highlights from the new research study Rob mentioned about rural small businesses. In 2021, just last year, 3C commissioned a survey of 2,000 American small businesses that sell products. We asked them about how they sell, where they sell, and what support services they value as they sell their product. What we learned is that even the smallest product sellers use many different sales methods. They sell in brick and mortar stores, they sell in their own branded online, online shops, and they sell in digital marketplaces like Amazon and eBay. They also sell through apps like Facebook and Instagram. Today, a year later, we're releasing our first comparative study, which documents how small rural sellers are in many ways the same as their national counterparts, but in many ways, they're different. First, the data is remarkably clear. All sellers, urban, rural, suburban, use several different methods to reach customers. For rural sellers, the most popular methods are online. Online marketplaces are 57% and online web stores are 57%. Online sales generally account for 56% of rural sellers' overall revenue. This contrasts substantially when compared to all sellers, because all sellers still primarily use brick and mortar, 79%, and 78% use wholesale. So that's a huge gap, right? The leading selling methods for rural sellers are online. The leading selling methods for all sellers is still offline. In a nutshell, what does that mean? It means online sales are more important to rural sellers. And that's why we're here today talking with you about rural sellers and digital tools. A second important takeaway is how strong all three online leading online marketplaces are as they compete for rural sellers businesses. You may have heard from proponents of the big tech legislation that Amazon is a dominant online retailer and that all small businesses have to be on Amazon if they are to have any hope of success. When we talk to rural product sellers, they tell us something different. Amazon, eBay, and Etsy are neck and neck competing fiercely for the business of rural sellers. Amazon is the most popular at 33%, eBay has 30%, and Etsy has 27%. It's clear that rural sellers often live far away from distributors. They often live far away from um, their wholesale accounts, and it's just easier to reach people online for many of them. We'll hear today from sellers, some of whom are online first and some of whom are not online first. So we can ask them that question. So today we have three small business owners with us from rural Iowa, Ohio, and West Virginia. Joel Rudman owns Logic Products, an all-natural health and beauty company based in Fairfield, Iowa. Michael Milam owns Aerotags, a reusable air freshener maker based in Painesville, Ohio. And Aaron Velasic owns Mountaineer Popcorn, a popcorn company based in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. These small business owners are a great example of how rural sellers use different sales methods and leverage e-commerce to grow and succeed. Joel, why don't you kick us off and tell us a little bit about how Logic Products started and some of your success selling your products online. Yeah, our company was started about 10 years ago when my spouse, my wife, uh, gave me a call. I was in California and uh, she said that our daughter had come down with a terrible case of head lice, something I didn't know anything about and she did, knew very little about. And she ran off to the local pharmacy and purchased a over-the-counter pesticide-based product that she applied to our daughter's 
head. And unfortunately, our daughter got very sick. She actually went into anaphylactic shock, but recovered. And it set my wife on this crazy path that she didn't think she would get on. And she started work with a bunch of chemists and uh, uh, was able to develop a plant-based enzyme, which killed her arthropods, which is what lice were. We started to um, sort of mix it up in our kitchen sink and hand it out to other parents in the school. And they swore by it. They thought it was great. So she decided to bottle it up. We managed to talk an FDA registered facility to be able to bottle our products up. And we threw it on Amazon. And next thing you know, we started selling. And uh, here we are 10 years later, and we've got about 45 products in the marketplace. That's great. Thank you, Joel. Michael, tell us a little bit about AeroTags and how you sell reusable air fresheners from rural Ohio. So about 70% of my revenue, though, does come from Amazon. So that's been really critical to my business. So the big thing I think that helped with Amazon is just the, the fulfilled by Amazon. That was really a key part of the business because you get that prime badge and just drive so many more sales. People want that fast free shipping. And a lot of people pay the fee, you know, they pay the prime membership. So not using the prime, they feel like they're not getting their money's worth. So it's a bonus there. Um, yeah. So there's been lots of digital tools that I've been using for many years. A lot of them, you know, you just find through people, um, online, social media, podcasts, YouTube, there's all kinds of knowledge out there for free on how to use these tools. And it's allowed me to build a business that gives me the freedom to kind of build the business the way that I wanted to. And, um, you know, live in a rural area and still find some success on my own. And uh, I'm really thankful for that. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, Erin, tell us a little about your business, pop, uh, Mountaineer Popcorn. Today, we sell our popcorn uh, through a web store run by WooCommerce. Um, our storefront in Shepherdstown, a small, a small town, and we do have wholesale accounts in um, the four surrounding states, West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. Um, most, well, our revenue is broken down between um, in-store sales are about 40%, online 30%, and wholesale 30%. We do highly um, rely on on the internet and different if different social media sites as well. Um, during the pandemic, we did start selling um, through Facebook and Instagram. We had a unique um, kind of drive through service. People would order throughout the week and then um, pick up on you know two given days and either given day, and um, and I would do a drop off either in their. Um, in their trunk or on the sidewalk, whatever whatever they felt comfortable with. And that um, sparked us to go ahead and um, start selling digitally for in-store pickups um, as well now. And, and then of course we do, we do ship our popcorn. So we're thankful for that. And we just realized we can definitely continue to grow. Um, you know, we started with our storefronts, um, went in farmers markets, um, and then we added wholesale accounts, you know, local markets, wineries, breweries, um, coffee shops, and gift shops. Um, but we really do need to transition um, to add more market, you know, to be on different marketplaces. We've looked into, or we want to start looking into Etsy and eBay. Um, and we are currently speaking to a rep with FAIR. So it's really, it's not a, it's not a, if it's just a when and a matter of time for when we, we start. Next, I would like to introduce Professor Peter Hackbert of Berea College in Berea, Kentucky. He is the expert when it comes to entrepreneurship education and his research and advisory work focuses on the intersection of entrepreneurship and rural America. It's a pleasure to speak uh, for a few minutes today about the importance of rural entrepreneurship. Today, our work in Eastern Kentucky on the main streets, we see new business, new businesses emerging, bookstores, specialty apparel, apparel shops, boutique gift and collectibles, health food stores, photographers, breweries, and distilleries opening up and expanding in the region. A rural example, Double Barrel Honey in Winchester, Kentucky, integrates the famous Kentucky bourbon barrels to sell aged pure honey. Its selling channels include website, online ordering, retail outlets, the Kentucky Proud Hotel uh, wholesale distribution system to 43 retail shops and an Amazon account. Through a network of brokers and Jamaica coffee plantation, coffee plantation, Kentucky Mountain Coffee 
is the first coffee roaster and wholesaler in the heart of Appalachia, located in Painesville, Kentucky, with an online cart, a website, wholesale distribution system with the trademark and logo, logo supplying retail specialty stores and coffee shops across the state of Kentucky and the United States. These are the types of entrepreneurs and owners abundant in rural communities. Future legislation must strengthen the training, the development that leads to the capacity for small business owners to network and be effective and to thrive. Thank you. We're going to turn it back now to John, who's going to discuss specifically how proposed antitrust legislation will impact rural sellers. Thank you, Becky. These business owners represent very well how rural small businesses across the country sell their products. Some are online, many are online and offline, many are just offline, but they're all selling in a variety of ways and they all use digital tools for a combination of communicating with customers, managing their teams, launching new products, finding new customers and selling. Many of those tools work together and many are combinations of tools. That brings us to the American Innovation and Choice Online Act, S2992 and its house companion, HR 3816. At the core, these bills prohibit large digital platforms from self-preferencing, from favoring their own products and services over competitors' products and services. Supporters of these bills characterize self-preferencing as anti-competitive and discriminatory because a large company like a Google or an Amazon is favoring its own affiliated product or service. But for millions of small businesses, these combination um, products, these integrated services, they save billions of dollars, they simplify running your business, and they promote success. One good example of these is Amazon Prime and Fulfillment by Amazon, which are integrated in ways that help small business sellers guarantee delivery times. When a small business seller can guarantee delivery times of their air diffusers or their popcorn or their um, you know, lice shampoo, it qualifies them to be prime sellers. And when you're a prime seller, it means that millions of prime shoppers are looking for those products first. The way to do that is to get fulfillment by Amazon services, where the sellers deliver their products once to the Amazon warehouse, and the Amazon warehouse then takes that product and handles all of the packing, all of the shipping to consumers, all of the returns, and they guarantee that very small companies' products will be delivered on time. By using FBA and qualifying for Amazon Prime, small businesses are much more attractive to all those shoppers this is a big deal. It really makes small rural businesses a lot of money. The question for policymakers is whether Amazon Prime and fulfillment by Amazon is anti-competitive self-preferencing that unfairly benefits Amazon, or is it pro-competitive because it helps millions of small businesses compete against much bigger sellers? At 3C, we trust small businesses to answer that question and trust that millions of small businesses have embraced FBA and become prime sellers because it works for them. Another self-preferencing example is Google Search and its integrations with Google Maps and Google Business Profile. <coughs> Business Profile is a free service that helps local businesses like Mountaineer Popcorn present online consumers with all the important information about that business for free. As soon as you search for Mountaineer Popcorn online in Shepherdstown, it pops up in the upper right-hand corner of your monitor and it has the business hours, the reviews, the website links, directions to the business. Um, it's really a terrific free service for very small rural businesses. Because the Google Pro business profile includes Google reviews and Google maps, competitors who publish reviews or competitors that publish maps are offended and they want Google to stop this terrible thing. But local restaurants and shops and popcorn stores think Google business profiles are fantastic. So once again, should Congress pass legislation that helps companies compete against Google, or should Congress listen to millions of small businesses that appreciate this integrated product and service that really benefits them? We talked earlier today <laughs> about research, about what um, small rural business sellers use, um, what's, how they sell, right? Online, offline. Um, now we have a new piece of information that we're going to release this week. Um, on how much will these bills, how much will the um, S2992 cost 
small rural businesses? What's the tax of these, leg of these bills? Um, and what uh, this study will say is that small businesses will lose $500 billion of revenue in the next five years if these bills become law. That's more than $100,000 of lost revenue for each small business across the country in the next five years. That's a big tax just so that we can pass this legislation targeting four companies. Rural small businesses will disproportionately suffer these losses because rural small businesses are more reliant on e-commerce. That's what we learned today. And the economics just don't add up. The impact of these bills will be felt even more by people like Joel and Michael and Aaron and millions of other rural small businesses. They can't afford to lose $100,000 over the next five years. Small businesses in your community cannot afford that either. Thanks, Becky. Again, thank you everyone for joining this briefing today.